everyone. Thank you for watching Fortune's Palace by Ethan Cork. And um, we can just, you know, go around and introduce ourselves, um, you know, and get to know each other a little bit before we start our conversation. I can go first. My name is Jacqueline Johnson. I am the Unfinished Works Coordinator. And um, yeah, thank you. And let's pass it to the writer. Would you please introduce uh, yourself? Hi, I'm Evan Quirk. I'm the writer of uh, What You Just Saw. Hope you liked it. Uh, the actor's really amazing. Thank you so much. Making me look good. Uh, and uh, yes, who, who's next? Uh... Do you want to go next, Georges? Sure, yes. Hi, I'm Georges Bridges. I was one of the actors, and I'm also the community outreach liaison for the uh, Asian American Film Lab. And um, I'm really excited. I thought it went really well, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Happy to have you. Who's Thank you. Next? Who's next? Danielle, would you like to go next? Hi, I'm Danielle, um, and I uh, played um, Darla, Maylin, and Tanya, um, and I had a blast with this, um, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, to be aboard, and um, I'm excited to see what this workshop will bring. Yeah, me too. Great, thank you. Justine, would you like to come off of mute and introduce yourself, please? Hi, yes, I'm, my name's Justine, and um, I just, I'm viewing, the, I just watched the reading. Well, great, thank you. Welcome to you. We're happy to have you here. Thank, thank you for you. joining. Thank you. Jennifer, would you like to join? Uh, not join, but would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Jennifer. Um, I played Alicia, and I'm also the president of the Film Lab, but there was no casting bias whatsoever. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll throw the ball to Scott. Hi, I'm Scott. I, uh, I uh, used to work at UTA. Uh, I, I ran the story department read a lot of scripts and uh, I am the co-founder of Script Hop. Um, is now, do you guys want me to pitch the Script Hop thing or are we still going around the room? I wasn't sure. <laughs> I think that's everybody we have. So, um, you know, if you want to hold one second before we get to your, to get your expertise, I think that would be, be great. Let's, um, let's talk about what we just watched. And, you know, I did have a question to start off the discussion. Um, I wanted to know if there were any story storylines or characters that resonated the most with you as you read the script, as you were reading, or as you were viewing. And if you could elaborate and say why, that would be great. Let's get the discussion started. Well, I, I can start if you want. Um, so, so obviously the character that resonated with me most was the one that I read, which was Alicia. Um, I thought she was really fascinating. She was, and, and Ifan, I just want to say like amazing job, especially with all the characters. I thought they were all just so complex and so interesting. And they seemed to have just multiple layers you could kind of dig through and really enjoy both both as an actor and as a viewer. Um, and one thing in this, I, I mentioned to Ifan before, but um, one thing that we often see, especially as women or as Asian American women, is we see females uh, being placed in sort of the supporting roles, you know, the supportive mother, the sort of secondary role. And so, and Ifan and I had kind of talked about this because there are a lot of really interesting real women and particularly women of color that, you know, ran organized crime in New York City or on the FBI's most wanted list, all kinds of things, but their stories have kind of been erased. And, um, and so I was curious whether you know, you would be interested in sort of expanding any of the female characters or adding more, or if there's going to be sort of any, any more development along those lines. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> if you, yeah, yes, definitely. And it's something I've been thinking about, uh, you know, like, I think the, the women in this piece are definitely very important. And I think they have their own, you know, story arcs and storylines. And I really see it as an ensemble piece. And interestingly, watching this, you know, in my mind, I guess I kind of, you know, there's the father son dynamic and, you know, I kind of see both of those points of view. Um, but as I was watching, I felt like everybody really had their own little stories going on. And, you know, there's all these kind of little compromises that everybody's done and, uh interesting just kind of 
strangenesses in their lives that I think are really interesting to explore. And I, I really want to kind of get more into that. And I do think that as we go kind of deeper into the, as they're pulled deeper into the crime world, you know, we can, they're going to come across people that, you know, like the ones you're referring to, you know, I, the one I kind of have in mind is uh, Sister Ping, actually, or some, you know, not her, but someone like her, because I, I found that so interesting that on the one hand, you know, in the Western press, she's, she's depicted as this monster, but, you know, when she died that, you know, hundreds of people came to her funeral and then thought she was a folk hero. And it's like, I'm kind of like, what, how did that work? You know? So uh, I think that's a really interesting place to explore. And I'm, you know, I'm sure she did some terrible things, but at the same time, you know, some people really felt like she saved their lives. So, you know, where do you, where do you find what happens there? And I think to find that kind of edge for all the characters really is, uh, is kind of, a really interesting place that I can go with the, this. And uh, yeah, so I, I think there's a, there's a lot of material to go through here and, you know, just not having seen uh, things like this before, it kind of makes me feel like it was, I think oftentimes, I don't know when it's like, there's only one Asian character in a show or two, or it just feels like you don't really get a sense. Like I just finished watching Squid Game, like every everybody else in the world. Uh, but it was so interesting to me to see how like really all the characters were so separate, you know? And I feel like that's, that's something, you know, obviously that's a Korean show and it's done in Korea. I think it's, it's much easier because that's, that's just the way it is. But I feel like for Asian America, it's much, much tougher, you know, because partly it's like, you've just never seen it before. So um, I think that's, you know, there's just a lot of ground to explore that just hasn't been explored before. So, uh, and you guys really brought it to life and, and, you know, made me think even more about how rich everyone can be. So thank you. Uh, no. Danielle, any any thoughts? Oh, you're or still Danielle, muted. you're on mute. And um, you know, feel free. Uh, just I forgot a few housekeeping tips. Feel free to um, either raise your hand in the reactions window um, if you have something to say, and take yourself off mute, or you know, just join in the conversation. Thanks. Yeah, I I absolutely loved the the balances of the characters and the relationships with each other. Um, I thought each character really had their own particular um, uh, sort of chemistry with the other, um, the other character. And um, it was really interesting to see the family dynamic. Um, and I, I really enjoyed Darla and Robert's um, kind of sarcastic back and forth um, relationship. And, um, and I'm, I'm curious to see what that develops into. Um, I, I really enjoyed um, how there was always a twist and a turn um, with each character. Uh, there, there was some sort of hidden surprise um, that made me want to figure out what was happening after that. Um, and made me interested to, to keep watching. Um, yeah, I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed myself. Did you, did you feel the, I mean, I, I think it, it was in my mind and, and I don't know how you felt about it, but I definitely felt like Tanya and Jenny, there was a bit of flirting going on between them too. But yeah. did, was that something you kind of felt? I got it, yeah. As well? I saw that, yeah. <sighs> I I guess I brought that out then. <laughs> um, that that's definitely a potential line there. Um, I think they're I mean they're super close as friends, and you know I think as Tanya I you know I I I look out for her, and I'm really disappointed that she doesn't want to come home with me and um I kind of look at her longingly as she goes to the studio um back to the studio so yeah I think there's something to explore there for sure can I 
can I just ask, do, do we, do we know, I mean, I'm sure you know, but is, is he going to live? Does the, does Wayland survive? I mean, is there, are you going to let us in? <laughs> like, what is going to happen? You're going to have to watch the like, second episode to There seems get like that. there's so many ways this could go, like how the story would move, depending on what happens to him. Mm -hmm. right. And I did yeah. not. Right. Yeah, I think, so, I think. I think in my mind right now, his story is going to continue. Like he, okay. he's going to live, and the, and I think part of his story is going to be the recovery, uh -huh. and then also just like refocusing. You know, with the near death experience, you know, what is his, what are his priorities going to be? Is he going to, you know, say, okay, well now I'm just going to really just do what's going to make me happy, or mm -hmm. is he going to be? How conflicted is he going to be? uh so but yeah i think there's definitely going to be more to wayland you know and i think seeing this and and um <clears throat> talking to some of the actors who couldn't other actors who couldn't make it here tonight uh i have some other thoughts about how you know how deep he's been pulled into the to the underworld and i think maybe a little bit more than we saw in this pilot you know, and maybe in the revision, we'll see, see a little bit more of that. But I think he might be, he might be a little, right now it seems like he's on the fringes, but he might be a little bit more involved than we know, or, or that I will, you know, kind of create. I see. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> Georges, did you have any thoughts from, from watching or, you know, your characters, Arthur, the baby, I feel like, <laughs> you know, in my mind, he was a big character, you know, and the, and I think there was a lot that he did that in kind of, but it, it showed up more in the stage directions, you know, he didn't have big monologues, but I think there's a lot of feeling and there's, there's a, there's definitely a, an arc for him too, I think, as the, as the, you know, the kid who's been bullied and then, you know, how is he going to take, take charge of that? Is that going to turn him into something kind of, you know, darker or, you know, his anger, if he's going to find an, a way to express his anger, you know, which I think is, is kind of where, where I'm aiming to, to push him. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, you read him. I mean, did you have any thoughts about, about his, uh, his character? You really channeled his, the, <laughs> the young Thank Arthur, you so much. I say. <laughs> well, I thought his character was interesting and um, it's kind of representative of, of, well, a sign of the times now, um, stop bullying and uh, things like that. So I think his character is really relevant and um, and important to the um, to the script. And um, it was definitely um, a good choice to add add the author character to the script. And um, uh, hopefully, like um, when you do the revisions, maybe there'll be even more. You know, like we can find out more about him um, because he is a part of the family, their family. So yeah, I think that, yeah, this character is um, expanded somewhat. Yeah. Um, that would be great. Yeah. I mean, I had some thoughts about just like some little thing he does maybe, you know, that we see a little bit more into his world, you know, because I think that there is a kind of, there's a pain of when you're bullied that, you know, you've got to channel into something and how does he, how does he cope with it? You know, that I, that kind of, uh, I'm thinking about, so. You know, I was so, I'm glad you mentioned about Wayland and, you know, if he, hopefully that he makes it and how his priorities might shift or change. Cause I'm really excited to see that as you um, draw out the story and the character, because that was, you know, when sometimes when people have these near death experiences, you know, their, their lives change dramatically and they, you know, do a complete 180. So I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm excited that you touched on that because I'm really curious to see how, how you'll develop that. And also, um, do you have plans to go into Alicia and Waylon's backstory? Like, you know, when they were younger, um, you know, before they got together, like, is, like, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? uh yeah that sounds that would be cool <laughs> i hadn't really thought about it uh you know that might be more season two or okay. you know something like that but uh you never know i mean they could it could show up i mean i have i, I have thoughts already about like how it happened and, mm -hmm. and how it started and you know uh what did he see in her especially since he he you know had a relationship with doming before her you know and how did he, how did that 
happen. And um, so, so yeah, I mean, I think that could be, that would be very interesting. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in kind of diving more into their backstory as well. But yes, thanks for, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, I love to see it, love to see it. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to add on um, any characters or anything that resonated with them? Scott, yes, please. Yeah, if you want me to chime in now, yeah. I, I When somebody asked if Waylon's gonna be in it, I mean, I, th I really think that he and Roger are kind of the fulcrum of the piece. What I really like about it is the connection to the past and Waylon's that channel into the past. The whole thing about Tiananmen Square, um, mm -hmm. I love that stuff. If anything, I, um, you know, and I know, you know, pi the whole trick with the pilot is like, how much do you reveal now? How much do you keep close to the vest for later in the season and that kind of thing? And um, I, my philosophy tends to be that you should oversell a little bit so that you're the, 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 the conceptual mission is really resonant. And so I think that you could maybe bring that out even more. Like I just, just as a bad example, but like, one of the kids could discover a photo of, of Wayland at Tiananmen and Square. Um, I think there's ways to, to sort of thread it through really subtly. I mean, I like the, I, I, and I, I sense you're holding a lot back, you know, for later, which I, I respect, you know. Um, but, you know, and I have a lot of writer friends who, who wrestle with this. How much should I disclose now to sell, you know, the series with this pilot? And you can also think in terms of well, if I'm if I have, if I'm really getting in the room and pitching it, I can tell them where where this is going, you know. But I think you know there's maybe a little room for for planting a few more seeds about where you're going. But I really liked it a lot. I thought you juggle a lot of plot threads skillfully, economically. Um, I was engaged by everyone, um, and I if anything, I just you know, you left me wanting more about that, the historical, the way it, it, to me, a lot of it is about the conflict between the past and the present. One question I had was, um, you know, and I think you, you're, you're hinting around it, but I, 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 I wondered whether you might define it a bit more even in the pilot is uh, the degree to which they're struggling as a family because, and you know, a lot of it is about perception. Um, and I think that's really interesting, you know, because Roger's talking about his, he says, my dad's a business leader, you know, in the restaurant. And then we kind of learn he's had these sort of schemes. What was it like termites or something? Yeah, termites, right? Right. Um, and so I kind of was trying to grasp exactly who he is. I, and, and I really like the idea of they're coming from really humble origins and then putting on this, you know, everything sort of everything's on the surface, you know, is, is, is sort of sunny, or at least, you know, Wayland tries to project that, but underneath it is, you know, it, it belies all these secrets, right? But I kind of wanted to know, like, because I got the sense that the restaurant is maybe successful, but, um, you know, he's taking, he's getting this money to either just expand, is it just that he wants more, or are they financially going through a hard time? I wasn't quite sure. Um, so, you know, another another example of where I thought maybe Roger is another bad example, probably. But, you know, you could have a scene early on where Roger sees Waylon like dyeing his hair, you know, that there's some connection with Roger and his dad and he's on to something about a cut the cover up. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and then I uh, the, the whole thing with the triads, I think it could be really interesting. And I don't know if you're going in this direction. Is Lee Chen connected to that past in China, maybe? I don't know. I, I think more that, I mean, he has connections there, but he's really kind of rooted here in New York okay. City, you know, but of course, if he is, you know, the godfather of Chinatown, he's going to know someone back there. He's maybe going to be, maybe not reporting, but there, you know, he'll be aware of the powers that be there. Maybe they'll be doing deals you know, with, you know, someone needs to come through from, from China, uh, from Hong Kong, or, you know, um, China, you know, he'll, he'll facilitate that, you know, if, they, if something needs to be done. So he definitely has connections there. Uh, and I think he might, you know, compared to Alicia's father, or the, Alicia's father's connections, he may be a little bit of a smaller fish, but at the same time, he's the he's in New York anyway. He's kind of the biggest fish. 
And one of the, I think you, you bring an interesting thing about, you know, kind of how well are they doing? Because I think one of the things I'm hinting at, but haven't really explicitly stated is like, if he is doing so well, why doesn't he just go to a bank? You know, why does he go to Lee Chen? Mm -hmm. And, and I was, and I'm kind of thinking, you know, the restaurant is successful, but, um, but, you know, maybe Wayland is still, you know, he has these big dreams that can succeed, but at the same time, you know, he has this huge house. Does he really need this huge house? His expenditures may be, you know, even though he's doing well, he, he doesn't have the credit that's good enough, you know, that he can go to a bank, which is one of the reasons why he goes to Lee Chen. So he's kind of like also just on that edge, you know, it's like he's doing well, he's doing well, but if he makes one wrong move, he could just fall off a cliff, you know, and maybe that's just exactly what he's done. And they're going to have to pick up the pieces and try to figure out, you know, what to do. And I, and I do think um, like one of my thoughts is that they're going to, you know, the whole family, but maybe, well, I, in my mind right now, it's more Roger and then maybe Arthur a little bit. They're going to get pulled into this kind of the, the illegal world, you know, and uh, I think interesting like Wayland's Wayland you know he may just kind of try to get out and you know have a life with Doming and but I think Alicia might actually align herself in the opposite way that she's going to become kind of a someone who wants to clean up Chinatown you know and she doesn't know that Roger's being you know kind of sucked deeper and deeper into this as he's trying to make up for what his father did you know and then Arthur as the one who's bullied you know the kids who are who are like Arthur are prime targets for recruitment into the street gangs. So, you know, if he gets pulled into that, maybe even a rival gang to what Roger's getting pulled into, you know, things just kind of get really complicated and they just don't even know what the other person is doing. And they're, you know, they're actually kind of unbeknownst to each other enemies, you know? So I think that's kind of a one direction I'm going um, for the Bible. Uh, but you know, I've been doing, it's interesting what you say about, you know, one, one person I talked to who read this uh, wanted actually less revealed. He wanted like an even slower burn, he said, which I, which I think was interesting. But going back, you know, I read, I reread the pilot for Breaking Bad and I read the pilot for The Sopranos and I'm amazed at how much they pack into those pilots. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I, I like your point, Scott, that I think, you know, maybe pack in a little bit more. You could, it's easier to take away, you know, so you have a reader, you know, and they say pair back, don't reveal as much. That's easy. They can imagine that. But if you don't show it, they may not know, you know. I don't want to say overwrite because, you know, like if you're writing something really suspenseful, you don't want to force a disclosure just to say you, you, that that would make it lame. But I think you. um to some degree, you, you can look at it as overwriting. And, and the idea is when you get in the writer's room, you're going to peel it back, right? Yeah. Up, then, that, then, you, then you can really peel it back. Yeah. And, and I think we can never overwrite when it, if it's dramatically going to, you know, undercut. Right. Right. Yeah. I think I can, I can drop some more hints or, or foreshadowing of things that are going to happen though. You know, that I think that that's, there are things that I know are going to happen that I kind of haven't hinted at at all. And I think maybe I should, because I think uh, actually like Roger's last line in the, in the pilot, which is actually, I think the first time you really hear him curse as well. You know, uh, although I think his, his, uh, his video didn't turn on, but he's, he's at the end, he's like, I'm fucking, I'm going to fucking destroy them, you know? And it's like the first time we've seen that in Roger. Mm -hmm. And I wanted that moment to be, you know, oh, wait a minute, you know, Roger might have this darker side to him. He's not just this, you know, kind of rebel musician kind of, you know, slightly douchebag character, <laughs> you know, I mean, I definitely had some comparisons in my mind to, um, you know, Henry the fourth, you know, kind of Prince Hal and, you know, the, 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 the youth who's kind of just seems to be squandering it, squandering his, you know, his talents. Uh, so uh, I wanted that hint, but I think I could maybe drop a few more hints so that we get a better sense of where Roger's arc is going. Cause I, I watching it, I'm like, you know what? I don't, I don't really know where he's going yet. You know, 
Uh, and I think not to give too much away, but just to, to, to give you more of a hint of his darker side would, would be helpful. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Jennifer, did you have any thoughts about Wayland as, as your significant other? Sorry, I was like trying to find the unmute button. I'm like, oh, I lost it. Um, I was actually just really curious playing with the, um, where their relationship was and what his, you know, all the questions about his sexuality, is he even, does he love Alicia? Does he want to be married to Alicia? Like, why did he marry her exactly? Like, was that just a sort of a trophy wife thing? And, you know, because I mean, he's willing to like, just run away, like leave his whole family behind at that. And I know he's, you know, um, he's intoxicated and whatever. So, but still, that's a really huge, that's a, that's a big deal. And especially because he's, he's been so very traditional, just in the sense of I am the patriarch of this family. And, you know, I have my prestigious business and each of my children has this very specific role. So that's just like, when I read that scene, I was like, whoa, what happened? Um, and it's really, I don't know, you know? So that's actually, uh, right. that, that I had kind of emailed you about, like what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the way I, and I guess this is maybe what Jacqueline was talking about, the backstory of Wayland and Alicia, I think it's, uh, I, I do think he loved her. And I think there was a certain, she come, you know, she comes from wealth and he saw her as this kind of, you know, like almost like a movie star to him. And, and so in a weird way, it didn't matter that, you know, he's bisexual or gay, you know, it's like he fell in love with her glamour. You know, and I think she, she she is a glamorous person, you know, and, you know, stylish and classy and all these things that he would like to be. Right. Um, but isn't. And uh, so he it's it's maybe almost like a little Gatsby esque. You know, he kind of almost reinvents himself into the Wayland we see today, even though he had this kind of wild past, which he turned his back on because he almost died and his and his and he thought his lover was killed. You know, but when he comes, when he, you know, he runs away to Hong Kong, he's, he's, he's about to be, you know, he's being chased by the authorities. He, it, you know, has a new identity. He meets, you know, he meets Alicia and then he, it's almost, he's kind of swept off his feet a little bit by her, you know, and then in turn, he wants to sweep her off her feet and he, he manages to do it because he's kind of this almost a, a bit of a charming con man, you know. Uh, except, you know, I guess, unlike Gatsby, he, he continues, spoiler alert, uh, um, but he, I think we've all read Gatsby, right? Um, he continues the journey, you know, and then it's almost like, well, what if Gatsby had married Daisy and they'd had kids and they'd gone on? Like, what would happen then? You know, so, so kind of funnily, uh, that's a little bit how I see him, you know? I think that tension in his character, but um, with but between uh, Domingue and his love for his his kids, that's that's really powerful. Um, I almost wondered if, because again, just you know, from from agency perspective and talking to other writers, that the cliffhangers, like kind of the big the the one of the maybe the biggest selling point in pilots. I almost wondered if you should hold back on the full reveal of their relationship until mm. the end. And maybe Roger discovers it somehow that he's like the conduit to that information. But I, you know, it, it, it I'm not saying it doesn't work the way you did it, just for the sake of that cliffhanger, mm -hmm. it's a way to, you know, say, save your uh, full, dis the full disclosure of that. But I, I thought that that's really a, that's a powerful thing, that conflict, that internal conflict about right, it, right. That's, which is great, you know, where he's talking to Domingue about the love for his kids. Yeah. And it's funny, like, I, I liked those scenes when I wrote them, but seeing them on their feet, I really felt like, you know, that they're really, I don't know, they, 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 they played really well. I mean, the, the James and, and son really did a great job there. Um, but I mean, everybody did really, I, I, all those scenes really, you know, came to life. You know, I thought, uh, were you actually blushing in those scenes, Jennifer? It looked like you were actually blushing. <laughs> it's kind of like, wow, she's good. She is good. 
<laughs> like if you were doing, I don't, you were doing something. I just jumped off. Like, I don't right. know. <laughs> just like automatic control of your blush response. I mean, that's, that's, that's real crafts craft. Um, but yeah, no, that scene with, with uh, Jiang actually. And uh, I, I mean, in the casting, I, I did, it was kind of my little joke, I guess that, I had Jong being your kind of former lover as well, as well. So it was kind of, you know, I just thought that that was that was like Sun's acting challenge. You know, I think he did it well too, but he was he was so kind of slimy as Jong, yeah. you know. And then as Doming, he was so kind of quiet and you know artistic. So, but uh, it worked well. So yeah, that was funny. Um, oh, Scott, just so clip in terms of cliffhanger, are you thinking that I, you don't reveal their relationship in the pilot, that it goes later? No, in the, in I was just, episode, or just revealed differently in the pilot. You know, in film school, we always did something where you'd say, this is a bad, my last name's Foster. So you'd say bad Foster solution that leads <laughs> the writer to a better solution. Uh -huh. Bad Foster solution. And, and they're not, that doesn't mean it's always terrible. It might be, but it's just a ballpark. Sure. That, Roger, while he's in the ER, finds his phone and there's something on the phone. He's like, oh, my God. And this just opens up. I could see that also being under mm. the phone, blah, blah, blah. But but there, but it might connect with something we saw. It might fill in a blank. Um, I like the idea of Roger being a conduit for info, because I feel like that's where you're going with a lot of the tension, the connection to the past, to the present. Um, and so I could see you know, Roger discovering something like a mystery, you know, mm -hmm. he's discovering this clue and he realizes, you know, the way this guy is texting my father, what's going on here, you know? Right. So I don't know, I don't know what the answer is there. I just saw right. there's a way to hold the disclosure at the end, you right. just hit it. I mean, he's been shot, he learns this and everybody's like, holy crap, you know, there's- Right, I, I see, I think, I see where you're getting to though. I think like maybe an even bigger, like secret that comes out at the end just to kind of really pull you into that second episode you know like what the what's going to happen what's going on you know it's just uh, such a big deal now like i i've read pilots that i thought had a good ending and i'll share them with uh colleagues you know some people who are decision makers and they'll be like it still needs more of a cliffhanger <laughs> right so. right danielle did you have something you'd like to add I keep uh, not <laughs> unmuting myself. Um, I, I was going to say on that note, um, I like I do like the idea of that bigger reveal at the end. And, and I don't know exactly how it would be done, but um, the idea that may, perhaps an idea would be that after Roger or even before Roger has his monologue um, with Wayland, perhaps somehow um uh he, the the i'm sorry the arts character um doming um yeah doming if he was somehow contacted about um wayland and he shows up at the hospital as well and mm. maybe like he like when no one is looking he like kisses him on the cheek or on the lips or something to like you know be like whoa wait hold, what what happened there um, that was just a thought that I had when he was, you know, when he was talking about the bigger reveal at the end. Right. And maybe right. somebody sees it. Sees the kid. Yeah. The children. One of the children maybe sees it. Or Alicia. Who knows? Uh, waiting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know, we didn't get a chance to mention, uh, for those of you who might not know, but Scott is the co-founder of Script Hop. And he used to be um, at uh, United Talent Agency, right? UTA? Yes. Yep. And so, um, you know, we only have about nine minutes left in our conversation. And I wanted to know, you know, you already mentioned about overselling and, you know, leaving on a cliffhanger. But as Ethan goes and develops his series and starts to pitch it, did you have, and for any other writers out there who may be watching our workshop, did you have any any tips on how to make a script more marketable or how to take it into meetings to pitch and you know any like tips and pointers that you've seen in your in your experience in the industry 
Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, you know, I would recommend checking out our website, uh, scripttop.com, and it is basically a way of bundling um, all the documents that revolve around your project, lookbook, Bible, script, into one uh, interactive uh, vir virtual folio that uh, basically promotes your work. Um, it's got a bunch of security features that you don't have with the PDF. Like you have no idea what happens with a PDF when you send it out. Uh, it could be sent to hundred people. You'd have no idea. You, you know what's happening it with, with it with Scriptop and people who uh, receive it, they, they will always have access to your most uh, current revision. They'll be updated automatically. So anyway, check, check that out. But um, in terms of using it to uh, sort of draw out your vision. So the whole thing we're coming out with in about, I think two weeks is the version 2.0 that's really gonna have a TV focus. And it gives you the ability to pitch the whole season arc. You can, you know, you can use it to bring and pitch live in the room. If you go into a room and you screw up, one of the great things is, you know, one of our, our, our possible marketing uh, approaches is did you blow it in the room? Because you, with a packet, you can videotape the perfect pitch and they'll have that. You can, you can uh, intercut with imagery on it, but we offer a lot of other media features. Uh, soundtrack is gonna be a thing that you, so as they're reading your script, they can actually have soundtrack. Um, this is all stuff you could use with this. Um, so it also really helps you structure your pitch. So the world, what is it? Um, we base this on how, you know, managers at really prominent companies are having their clients uh, pitch the project. So it really helps you structure everything and uh, provide these really compelling interactive features that that draw uh, people into your work. Uh, Script Magazine called us the world's uh, first first interactive system for screenplays. So, um, so I think did that kind of start to go into what you're saying? Should I get more specific or? Sounds really cool. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I had a question. Uh, so, like in the lookbook, uh, you know, like I looked at uh, the Stranger Things Bible, and they took all these like, you know, images from Poltergeist, ET. Did they need to get permission for that, or if we're doing it as a thing, like, can we just kind of take stuff off the web and put it in your lookbook, or is that yes. like that's on us, or? Uh, right on our website, the one we're using uh, as our sample, and we'll have more for the TV in a, in a, in a couple of weeks, we'll have uh, the other samples. We're using just Google Images. We also provide um, uh, websites that are guaranteed to be free, uh, so you don't have to worry about the proprietary nature of them. But I mean, honestly, for that one, I just use Google Imagery. Um, nothing fancy. I mean, you can have your friends create art for, for, we have something called like a highlight reel that fades in and out. Um, you can have uh, dialogue and imagery. And one really effective thing is just to take one image with like a really strong line or a tagline from your project. We've seen really effective stuff done with that. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You're not going to be profiting off of your lookbook, <laughs> you know? Right. Right. Um, and do you, uh, I also just curious, so the, in terms of, so you've got the pilot, so I've got the pilot, how, how, do you have a feeling of how important those three parts you just talked about are, like pilot versus the Bible versus lookbook, are they all equally important? Is the script most important? Is the Bible most important? Do you have a sense of that? Well, so sure you do. Kind of interesting. We, we reapproached this version 2.0 before everything was bound to your script, the way we had it before. So in your summaries, we provide summaries and we have something called entry points. So, you know, if you're reading a synopsis, you click into an entry point, it'll take them right to a scene in your script that you think is great to really excite them. So we had everything hovering around the script, everything oriented around the script. But with TV, so much revolves around the pitch now. And in, in a lot of cases, they'll say some execs don't want there to be a pilot so that there's room for them to really shape it. Um, I think it's good to be prepared with one, especially if you're, you know, if, if a writer is not a known quantity, I think it, it's helpful to have that really strong writing sample, but we've designed it now so that you don't have to have a script at all. If you have a pitch packet. So I, it really depends. I mean, people have different philosophies on this. 
Um, that's the one I'm hearing more and more. You know, we have a pretty big advisory board with some really prominent writers, and some of them have said both things. <laughs> so, so it's good to be prepared, I guess, is what I'm saying. Do you have any recommended Bible kind of guide guides or or you know any anything you're noticing about Bibles? Like I I looked at uh, you know Chris Mack at Netflix. He has uh, he has a a little kind of Bible or pitch document kind of, you know, slideshow that he does and uh, which was really interesting, I thought, and it seems pretty current, but uh, just wondering if you had any thoughts about Bible format. We really were, uh, a lot of it was based on Ozark, but also, you know, where we see some shortcomings with people's like with Ozark goes on and on about contextual stuff, which is fascinating. But if you're an exec you're getting somebody's Bible. You don't want to necessarily read, like he has stuff like what really shaped the, the town like 50 years ago. And, and you might not even touch on that stuff. He's just really giving you all this context. So it's great with uh, uh, the packet, with Scriptop's packet is you can do that deeper dive. We, you can click to expand for more, but you can have the high level information readily available and then dive deeper because we were like, who, who really wanted to read? And I'm, I'm a big reader, but th this, all this contextual stuff was a little, I think a little much for a, probably a lot of execs. But, right, uh, right. So, so but, but we like, we, we thought it was a very, other than that, it was a very standard, um, I think, approach. Ozark, Ozark is, is good. Right, okay. Yeah, I was reading oh, the uh, True um, Detective. You know, super famous, everybody looks at the Stranger Things, you know. Right. Bible. And the, uh, I, lo I love the true detective one. It feels like someone's like graduate level thesis, you know, <laughs> the detective uh, bitch. That actually, The Wire too. The Wire sounds like a, it's like a sociology paper. I got to see The Wire. It's one of my huh? favorite shows. I got I to gotta find there. Wow. Oh yeah, yeah. It's out there. It's, <laughs> it's, it's easily found, but okay. it's, it's quite funny just to read it because you're just like, okay, you know, like if I were an exec, I'd be like, I mean, I think he already had a track record, so it probably didn't matter. That's just it. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So he could just go off and no you know, do his dissertation, but, uh, but you know, the Fargo one was pretty fun too, actually. That was very an entertaining read, which I kind of liked and an interesting structure too, to it, you know, uh, if you've read that one. I have not read that one. That's, it's not bad. I would check it out. It's short too. Um, but he sets it up like this is a story about, you know, this guy who's like this, this guy who's like that, you know, and then, you know, it's like they're all almost just like little slugs, uh, mm -hmm. slug lines. Mm -hmm. Cool. So with, um, with our packet, what's cool, you can even do like, uh, you can cast against type and explain why. There's just, a lot of, uh, it provides a lot of room for you to make a case that you you wouldn't have in say a Bible, but in a way, again, that they can grab the high level, they grab the information they want and they can dive deeper into the stuff that they, it just helps them navigate it and not feel that uh, it's annoying. I mean, what we're getting a lot is that there's a lot of lookbook fatigue that they don't, you know, they get these 30 page Bibles and they're like, where's the thing I want? And, you know, so that's why we designed this. And the, and the thing is, you again, you can attach the, the Bible that you want to put in all the frills that you want. You can attach this in the packet, but it, the packet is really an interactive lookbook. It brings it, it, it brings your vision to life in a way that right. dead sort of lifeless uh, lookbook doesn't. Right. Very cool. Can it include video, like a little video? Yes. Clip? Yes. Uh, so like with these great I mean, actors, you know, you could have them do a little clip and just exactly. put it in there. You could put in a scene. If you have friends or actors, you don't have a big budget, but they, you know, they can deliver this scene. You could just shoot it in a room and, and put it in that, put it right there in that scene. Um, you know, even for like locations, like, you know, also some production stuff like for a location scout he can go videotape where where he thinks you know great spot to shoot put it right there uh in in a scene um for sci-fi stuff it's really great for you know maybe you read the other thing is that you might be a purist who wants to read it and not see any visuals at first but then you you know like me as a when i produce i'll read i'll read it first but then if i really am digging it i want to know more 
So this imagery isn't just there. It had their little icons and you click and it'll open up this multimedia experience. So it's not obtrusive, it's there to entice them further. Um, so yeah, you can have the location stuff, you can have scenes, you can have pretty much everything, storyboards. It sounds awesome. We like it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds really cool. And that's coming out in about two more weeks, you said, Scott? I, I believe about two weeks. Oh. <laughs> it's been a little nuts. We just got our, our funding and uh, it's been busy. <laughs> so, yeah, but I think thinking about two, two weeks. Oh, busy is good. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to say thank you to all the wonderful actors who contributed their time and their talents to read. Uh, congratulations, Ethan, for your thank you, meeting. thank you, and thank I'm gonna you get for writing your and, <laughs> Yes, thank you, and hope yeah. I'm going to get writing, and hopefully uh, you'll have me back for for po Fortune's Palace 2.0. Would definitely love to see you all again and work with you all again. So thanks so much. Thank you. Me too. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good, Good night. Pleasure.